Brian Bernard is going from Spec Engineering is going to um, tell us about the next project. Sorry for the snafu, but I think we got it straightened out. So uh, I have the pleasure, and I really appreciate being honored here for uh, Kraft Heinz and Spec Engineering being able to uh, do a great project with them for their iconic brand, their Kraft Macaroni and Cheese. Uh, this is a little different because it was uh, an existing plant, a plant that had been um, in, in, you know, pro in operation for many, many years, and uh, they had a real need for upgrading their line. So an optimization project really is what was at hand. We had been working with the plant for a number of years, a uh, really, really good team of people up at, at Wausau, um, John Schmelzer, you know, a, a long-term, 30-year operations person there, passionate about uh, the plant and the people there, was really uh, instrumental in working to figure this out. Uh, we also had a great opportunity to work with um, uh, a, a good architectural firm, Dean Schneider, who also has done a lot of work with Kraft and really did a great job uh, integrating this challenge into an existing plant, which we all know is very difficult to do. Let me get the... Uh, So I want to tell you a little bit about Spec Engineering. We're a, we're a small um, process engineering firm. We've been around since 1979, and we do uh, all the things that are on the plant floor. You know, equipment, cust customized integration, and controls. Our seven pillars of service really set us apart because we're the type of firm that can do the engineering, the modeling, the planning, the design but we also do the equipment, the specifications, the integration, and, and of course the implementation startup, which we know is a challenge in an in a, in a ongoing plant. So a little bit about uh, some recognition to the spec team, as well as some of the, the instrumental craft folks. Um, like always, you need a very tight-knit group of people that are subject matter experts in everything from powder handling in this case, to blending, to CIP, to piping, to uh, cooking and, and, and batching. So a lot of things there. Um, Brian Tuminello led, led the design and the, he was the project manager. Um, and once again, similar to the Glambia, we, re, we did this project right in the middle of the pandemic, um, implemented it through the second and third quarter and then started it up in fourth quarter into January of 2020 and into 2021. Um, key, key people uh, during the implementation was our, our, our lead and install. Uh, Dan Jones ran about six different crews of pipe fitters, riggers, assemblers, and, and the like to do that in a, in a operation that was ongoing was very difficult and very challenging and had to work very closely with the plant as you can imagine. Uh, spec Engineering is, is part of uh, uh, Gray Construction, Gray Inc., and uh, we're their processing and equipment and integration arm of that uh, design build for food and bev opportunities. Um, Gray has been established in 1960, been around quite a bit, and uh, really a family-owned and uh, family culture-based company, really take care of our customers, and in this case, uh, had a great relationship with Kraft. Um, we're a fully integrated service provider. You know, key focus is food and bev. You know, uh, everything from cheese to proteins and, and the like. So I like to say we're passionate about engineering, but we're, our priority is safety. And we're very proud to work with Kraft to have no incidents on the site. Uh, safety is a culture strong within Gray and within Spec, and of course within Kraft that uh, really made this project very successful. So obviously we all know Kraft, but um, really unique opportunity to be involved in the, you know, the Kraft Mac and Cheese, which is probably you know, one of the flagship brands of the company. But of course they've been around for 85 years, been a real key part of Americana. You know, you, you look at the amount of brands and, and things that are in our everyday life and it's just, uh, a really privilege to, to work with Kraft uh, at this plant and, and other, other plants as well. You know, I, I think we talked a little bit about what we're going through right now and, and actually because this product was, you know, a staple and during the pandemic became a very important product, 
there was even a more urgency and more stress on the team to bring this project to bear you know, in the time frames uh, planned. So I want to tell you a little bit about the project scope, uh, uh, much different from Glambia, uh, and because it was an integration. Uh, the, the, the picture you're seeing right there is basically a corridor between two buildings that we built into the powder handling process area to, to expand that, that operation and modernize that to accommodate the growth needed. A couple of, couple of details in there. Um, we incorporated nine different ingredients, uh, bulk bag, unloaders and feeders to get precise batching, uh, quick batch uh, and smart batch. Uh, using um, lump breakers were needed for the product that needed, needed lump breakers to flow better. Uh, volumetric feeders and, and of course the loss and weight scales to make the, the batches precise. Um, hoppers and valves and, and, and conveying systems and then a reclaimed tote dump system that um, uh, able to reutilize other products and, and rework for sustainability. Um, thousand, thousand feet of pneumatic conveying lines, which is nothing compared to some of the, some of the volume of lines at Glamby, of course, but, but again, in a, in a tight area, very, uh, very impressive to, to fit that in. Uh, we, did a, we did a two batch uh, filter receiver. So one was being loaded while the other one was being discharged to the cookers. And the timing was very, very critical to get everything done in a short period of time to make the batches. Some project highlights, um, you know, as, as discussed, batching was very important to, to get the second cooker and the increase in production up. And, um, you know, we had little time to spare and had to do a lot of time studies, our, um, working with the plant and working with our uh, integration engineers to get that exactly right was, was very key. Sizing the conveying system and getting the sequence, sequencing down was also very critical. Um, in this plant, we had to custom design all the platforms, all the hangers, all the uh, machine rigging and, and mounts, and all of it had to do, you know, in a, in a tight area and, you know, had to work that. Again, utilizing modeling and scanning to get that exactly right down to, again, 16th of an inch is very critical, and we had a lot of tight spaces to work within, as well as uh, in a plant that was continuing to operate. Just to give you an overview of the layout. Um, the area where you see the bulk bag um, fillers, which are kind of the X's, if you will, that's the new area of between the two plants that was the construction area, and, and it fed to the um, new cook room, and then, and then back into the rest of the process, which was um, you know, the spray drying room, which will come up a little later. One of the things that was really critical about this, or interesting about this project, was the fact that it, it incorporated four separate areas that all kind of worked together. A dry material handling and, and batching of all those ingredients, the, the wet kitchen, the kettles, the batch makeups that, that uh, fed the, the cookers, and then, of course, uh, pumping and conveying to the spray dryers, existing spray dryers, but then integrating a uh, dry mix blend system to incorporate the, the, the upgrades in the formulations so that that could be uh, put into the system. And all, again, done in, a, in an area where uh, operation and production was continuing to, to go. Showing some models here. This is, this is the bulk bag filling room, or bulk bag discharge room, I'm sorry. And again, nine ingredients, um, took a real attention to detail to get the operators so that they could get efficient uh, use of the space, get product in and out in, a, in an effective manner. A couple things that were worked into the controls was um, scanners so that the right ingredients were put in the right dischargers that matched up with the right feeders. So those scanners were, were put in place to coordinate with the uh, batch ingredient and uh, a little go, no go type of uh, simple controls. Again, that all that data was captured for traceability, for batch integrity, and for um, you know, lot, lot data. Couple pictures of the operation uh, rolling, and um, you know, again, a, a very, very nice, um, clean setup for all the dischargers. Took a, took a lot of care to make sure that dust and other things were mitigated and um, 
operation and operators were able to access the equipment and the bags uh, easily. Uh, again, talked a little bit about the uh, dual uh, receivers. So again, real simple batching. One, one receiver is being batched to while the other one is feeding. And, and it was a batch continuous in operation to feed the cookers. Some modeling of the cook room. Again, a uh, batch kettle makeup that fed the cookers uh, in, in precise timing with the drop down of the dry ingredients. So a combination of the liquid slurries and the dry ingredients going to the cookers at critical times. And that cook batch was optimized um, in, a, in a scratch pad type batch workup so that it could really be optimized to make the most efficient use of the cook time and the deliveries. Couple pictures of the um, cook room. Very hygienic in design. The new dry room, this was, this was a new challenge or an additional challenge because we had um, a space constraint but we had to you know, get another mixer into the existing drying room and uh, so we found a space in between a couple of mezzanines and actually did quite a bit of design. A couple of our team members here, Chris Moore and a few of the guys that uh, spent many, many hours out there figuring out how to fit this thing in and get access to it, make it cleanable and uh, everything else. Again, custom design of, of the mezzanines to fit in ergonomically and safely so that the operators could access the new equipment as well as the, the existing. Uh, another thing that SPEC brings to the table is we're a 508A panel shop, so we keep all our integration, our programming, our controls in-house, so we're able to design and build the uh, control system uh, to the letter that the plant wanted it and uh, really had a lot of integration with uh, the operations folks there and they were very helpful. So one more, the fourth leg of this project was uh, also a, a CIP operation that needed to really improve their operation. Uh, their clean time had, had really become a problem so we, we created a new CIP system that would match 28 circuits uh, two at a time and, and ultimately had to shoehorn this into a small area, uh, removing some, some overhead plenum space to fit it in and, uh, and then did a tie over at the, you know, about 11 p.m. one night uh, on a Saturday, I think. So you can imagine how that was challenging. Um, again, a couple, couple details on it. Uh, the skid was 22 feet long, uh, 8 feet wide, 17 feet tall. That sounds like you know, a normal size, but that was to the inch of what we could actually fit in there. Um, we had a, we had a, as you can imagine, we had to actually walk that through the plant and, and get it to fit in. It was uh, quite a challenge. Um, three 1,000 gallon tanks to meet the demands for the circuits required. And, um, you know, 21, tw 21 to 28 circuit feed points um, and cut their clean time down for their existing plant and the new things by about 40 to 50 percent. So one thing that is also very key uh, is building this prior to installation. So we did a complete fat test on it, able to build it, assemble the mezzanine and everything, so we made sure everything was done and ready to go because we couldn't really afford any mistakes uh, when we, you know, got past the point of no return, removing the, the old systems. So this was done uh, in our shop and, and put together uh, electrically tested, uh, hydraulically tested, and, and of course physically tested to make sure we had everything right. So installation, we talked a lot about you know integrating this into the plant both electrically, uh, tying into the old panels, um, getting, getting new feeds to the new equipment, um, all, the, all the frames and fabrication that had to be installed and implemented into the rooms. And again, getting everything tested and commissioned while the plant was operating from you know, Thanksgiving through early January was um, a, a really a good effort by everybody at the plant, by the spec team, and of course some of the really key contractors up in Wausau. So year over year, you know, the popularity of iconic brands is really important. And I think what's important for, for us in this case is that we had an opportunity to work with Kraft back in the early 2000s to help them with their original feed uh, system for the old cookers. 
Uh, we had an opportunity to do this modernization with them and it really um, makes me feel good about the relationship that we have um, working together over the years to really you know, help these plants improve and be a big part of that is uh, you know, just a, a really, really joy and a really proud for us to be. So thank you and thank, thank the Kraft folks for uh, having us part of their team and uh, appreciate the opportunity here to be uh, recognized for this award. So Brian, on behalf of Pro Food Row, I'd like to congratulate uh, Spec Engineering on the Kraft Heinz thank plant. You. Congratulations on a very interesting project. Yeah. Sean, we'd like to congratulate uh, you, everybody at the Wausau plant, and for a great project. Congratulations on this innovative project. Thank you very much.